Welcome to our worship service this morning with the Newburgh and Centerville Pastoral Church. We welcome all of you who are joining us online and certainly welcome you who are here in person this morning. We begin with a, a few, uh, quite a few announcements that we have in concerning the life of our, our pastoral charge. Our worship services, you know, continue to be recorded and are available late Sunday afternoon or into Monday morning for, for those at home to watch. We congratulate those celebrating birthdays and, the, and, and anniversaries in the coming week. Uh, white gift donations this year are happening on December the 5th. That's the first Sunday of, of the month. And our, our gifts this year are going to the Lions, uh, local Lions Christmas Hamper Campaign, which is put on uh, through direction from the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army provide a number of families and the, and the makeup of the families. And then the, the Lion, local Lions Club uh, contribute, distribute hampers to those families. We want to be a part of that. So there's quite an extensive list of, list of suggestions of items that you can begin to collect when you do your shopping uh, for that December 5th date. Uh, mitts and hats are also always welcomed to the, to the giving. Our drive through nativity is gaining some momentum on Dece for the December 17th. We were not successful in getting the grant that we had applied for, and um, we are looking for people to help uh, so that we can borrow items that we were hoping to purchase uh, with the grant money. So extension cords and flood lighting and construction site lighting with the, with, on the stand are, are just some of the things that, that we will need. So um, certainly if you have some items, contact anybody on the, the committee and let them know what you have available. And the Christmas parade is, is coming up in, on December the 5th as well. And Jeff, did you want to say something about that? You did, yes, thank you. Uh, good morning. My, uh... My role in the in the Christmas parade float is uh, organizing singers. So uh, I'm going to invite choir members, of course, but anyone who's interested in singing Christmas carols will uh, will dress up in some kind of festive uh, garb that's suitable for the occasion, and uh, um, we'll get music, of course, uh, of, of, of familiar carols. So uh, I think it'll be a great outreach for the uh, for the church and as Barbara is also pointing out it's a great uh, uh, advertisement for the live nativity as well so i understand there are now 30 floats that have been organized for this parade so we'll probably have people from far and wide thank you yeah. Yeah. Uh, the parade is almost to the point where they have to turn uh floats away so it's really coming together we want to be a part of that um Calendars, if you wish to order a United Church calendar for 2022, be in contact with Frida by the end of, of November, please. And the gifts with vision catalogs are out again now for, for the Christmas season. If you wish to purchase a, a gift for somebody hard to buy for, this benefits uh, a lot of people. This year, the gifts with vision also have uh, expanded to include an anti-racism category and uh, the catalog also includes their first ever project with an indigenous partner in Nineveh. There are also some gifts that have been very popular in the past like food for the north and help to build a well are returning in this year's catalog and also if you go to um, giftwithvision.ca there's a ex more extensive uh, catalog of, of opportunities, including uh, helping with distributing vac vaccinations, uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccinations and vaccines for people in the global south and in the east. And there are gifts to help people who have lost work because of the pandemic and to support our partners across the world in dealing with COVID-19 in, in small communities. So um, just something to think about. There are copies of this at the entrance. And as I say, giftswithvision.ca will also be, be very uh, instrumental in helping you choose some Christmas gifts. Those, oh, and the baking. The baking announcement, I believe, is up there. 
it, it is another uh, announcement that's coming coming together and taking great steam. We are offering one and a half dozen mixed cookies and squares in, in a, a presented in an attractive cookie tin for ten dollars, and orders will be accepted until the thirtieth of November. And information about pickup and so on and when they're assembled is also there. But there's a lot of orders that have come in and are continuing also to look for for containers that are festive or at least you know, attractive that we can put the food items in. If you have any tins that you're not using, um, by all means, maybe be in touch with Donna or Frida about that as they're the two that are the contact people for this venture. Anything I've missed or anything to add to what's already been said? Any questions? Right. Lots going on. Our call to worship response so as well this morning. I invite you to stand as you're able to join with me responsibly. The God of wisdom calls us to worship. In humility, we gather to offer our thanks and praise. The God of peace calls us to let go of our cares and worries. In faith, we turn to God for hope and guidance. The God of past, present, and future welcomes us into this moment. In joy, we celebrate life in today's God's presence. Let us worship God together. Hallelujah. Let us praise the Lord. And our opening hymn. Let all things now living, 242 in your hymn books or on the screen. and confession and then we will pause to just be with our thoughts and our own personal prayers let us pray Lord of light and life we come before you in wonder and awe eager to praise your name and enjoy your presence you are the source of all that is good and true the essence of love you bring gifts of peace and healing into troubled lives you show us the way to love friend and enemy alike, to build a better world together. In this time of worship, inspire us to believe our work in Jesus' name makes a difference. So may we live to bring you glory, O God, now and always. God of justice and mercy, you call us to take a part in our community, loving our neighbors and serving your purposes. 
We confess that this is easier said than done. We often sit in judgment on those who serve in public life, criticizing any who fall short of our expectations. Yet we confess we too fall short of your loving purpose for us. Forgive us when we have been too quick to criticize and too slow to join in what needs to be done. Lord God, receive our, the prayers and meditations, the thoughts of our hearts and minds. May you help us to make sense of them and to respond to them through your guiding. Receive these, our prayers, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Since Jesus died for us, we have peace with God, to whom be praise and honor forever. Amen. I want to say good morning to our boys and girls and, and those watching from home. I hope you boys and girls, who we miss here very much, are wearing one of these uh, today. We wear them smiles when we think about you. And I'm, I know the answer to this, but do you like fruit? How could we not like fruit? There's so many different kinds and flavors. And grapes is, is one kind of, of fruit that, that I quite enjoy. And I brought a few with me this morning. I think I grabbed the wrong bunch, but anyway, we'll make do with these. So these are grapes, and grapes grow on a vine. And they grow in bunches, so uh, if you can see very well, but here is, here is the vine, and then we've got these little branches in which on each branch grows a grape. And the nutrition comes through the vine, and the vine is attached to the roots, and the, and the nutrition and what the grapes need to grow comes through the vine and then extends out into the branches, and the fruit begins to form. Grapes have to stay close to the branches for them to keep giving fruit. What would happen, I wonder, if, if the grapes fell off the vine and just sat in the sun for a while? Then we'd have something that looks like this. We have, we'd have raisins, raisins, sort of dried up grapes. And raisins certainly are very good at making cookies or maybe sprinkling them on your cereal or a quick snack. But compared to you know, sort of beautiful, uh, nutritious and, and juicy grapes, uh, they're quite different. Did you know that Jesus talked about grapes? And we're going to hear him talking about grapes today in our scripture lesson. A lot of people in Jesus' time knew a lot about farming, and, and many had vineyards where they grew the grapes. And what he was explaining to them was how important it was to to stay connected to the, to the vine, and the vine representing God. And just as the vine provides nutrition that helps the fruit grow on a plant, Jesus gives us all that we need to grow in our faith. We are the branches, God is the vine. So God provides us with the, the ability to grow in our faith. And the branches on a grapevine have to stay connected to the vine so that they can produce delicious fruit. Otherwise, they dry up like the raisins do. And if we walk away and abandon our faith, we kind of go the way of the raisins too. We lose our faith and our faith weakens. So we need to stay close to the vine so we can produce the fruit that God is calling us to produce, the good fruit. We're not going to, of course, sprout grapes, but we're going to produce good things in our lives like peace and patience, kindness, one of the reasons we, we go to church is to listen to, to God, to, to be connected with other branches so that we can all kind of abide in the vine together. And most importantly, we recognize that Jesus is doing the work and producing fruit through us. We don't have to do a special set of tasks or have enough faith. 
we just need to stay connected to the vine of Jesus and let the Holy Spirit develop its fruit. Something for us all to think about while we enjoy our, our snacks and our, our, our grapes in the coming days. Jesus is the vine, we are his branches. Let us join all together now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to sing again as we remain seated. We're going to sing the first two verses of 345. Come, children, join to sing. Our scripture, le scripture lesson this morning is the 15th book of John, and I'm reading from the New International Version. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be uh, complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no other than this, 
that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not now be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Let us pray. Lord, teach us your ways and give us the grace to follow them. Give us eyes to see the world as you do. Give us hearts to love others as you do and give us the wisdom to discern how best to live as followers of Jesus, your living word. Speak to us now in this time. We open our hearts, our minds, our thoughts to your presence. Speak to us now. May these thoughts and words express and show your love. In Christ we pray. Amen. We have been involved in the Rooted and Established in Love worship series for 10 weeks now. Next Sunday we complete the series, having to leave one Sunday out, because in two weeks' time it's Advent. Next Sunday is Reign of Christ Sunday, followed by Advent. Last week we walked with with Jesus to his crucifixion. This week we hear Jesus address his disciples just prior to that. In the 14th to 16th chapters of John, Jesus offers comfort to us and the promise that he will not abandon us. Even with what he is facing and even in our world today that continues to evolve, it's restless, it's struggling, it's troubling, we can um, be confident in the presence of God with us in, in all of life's challenges and hurdles. With that kind of backdrop in mind, we pause today at the 15th chapter. Jesus has just washed the feet of his disciples and led them through a final meal and it instituted the Lord's Supper. And we hear words familiar to us from him at the supper, do not let your hearts be troubled. In my Father's house are many rooms. I am the way and the truth and the life. And those words still reverberate as we hear now and enter into the 15th chapter that Wendy has just read for us. And here we join with Jesus as he walks with his disciples into the Garden of Gethsemane. He is here where he will soon pray and later be arrested. And before the sun begins to set tomorrow, Jesus would be nailed to the cross. Jesus knew his timetable, and he was using his time and care with every word and action that he took. 
as he walked into the Garden of Gethsemane, there before him, an extraordinary image of nature, a visual lesson in the garden. Picture it. Amidst the olive trees, a great arbor. The vine at that time would, would just be beginning their season of growth. The little delicate signs of, of budding branches sprouting forth in the from the vine, and, and signs that the gardener had been there and tended and pruned and cleaned and tied the vines to the arbor. The season of growth had started the cycle of preparation for the bountiful season of harvest to come. Jesus begins this chapter with the words, I am. I am the vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. I am. I am the vine. My father is the vine grower. This image links with other images of the identity and mission of Jesus with those two words, I am. I am the bread of life. Chapter 6. I am the light of the world. Chapter 8. I am the door of the sheep. Chapter 10. I am the resurrection and the life. Chapter 11. All strong, familiar images of things we encounter day to day. The vine, light, bread, door, the hope and promise of the resurrection. So who then are we in relation to? How, who then are we in relation to I am? We get that answer today in verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I and them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. And whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and, I will be, and it will be done for you. Those are very powerful words that inspire us to abide in the vine. I want to share with you now just a, a few words that Sharon Miller wrote under the title Nice, Why We Love to Be Liked and How God Calls Us to More, entitled Dis Disconnected from the Vine. Christianity can be such a pretty thing. God calls us to wonderful things, to be noble, to noble deeds, and to be a people of love. We are meant to be kind, joyful, brave, and good. These are attractive qualities that most people would love to be known for, Christian or not. The trouble is, we can approach the Christian life in the same way we decorate a Christmas tree, by piling on pleasing spiritual adornments, we can dress up our lives with church commitments, community service, spiritual language, a clean-cut family, and an upbeat attitude. All these things look so great, so Christian, while obscuring what is really going on underneath. Beneath all the spiritual glitz, we can exist cut off from our root system, without detection. We can appear to be thriving even though we are disconnected from the vine. When the branches are disconnected from the vine, our source, our purpose, our nourishment is no more. And it goes the way of the raisins. We can become hollow and brittle. Whatever we do, we carry out without divine purpose, without divine motivation, without God's blessings and our action becomes robotic rather than motivated in love for God and for neighbor. We might go through the motions without doing it for God's purposes, then the motivation, the potential, the heart of Christ is, is not present. What keeps you buoyant when you're experiencing troubled times and, and difficult days? What, what, what feeds you? What keeps you going? 
All week, the words of our hymn, last hymn, last Sunday, have been continuing to, to reverberate in my mind. To me, the word abide, the hymn abide with me, the word abide is, is a word of, of invitation. It's a word of comfort, a, a sharing, a, an intimacy. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help the helpless, oh, abide with me. Be with me, Lord. And I, I really like those words. Jennifer Benjamin Brooks, director of the Steinberg Preaching Institute, offered these thoughts on John 15. Each of us is called to receive Christ as Lord, to abide with him. And once we've made that initial declaration, we are adjured to take our leading and our sustenance from Christ who is the vine. But our responsibility doesn't stop there. Bearing fruit means engaging for ourselves as individuals and as the church in those activities and tasks that recognize and invest in the goodness of God's love by spreading that love to, to the neighbor whom we are called to love. The specifics of bearing fruit are, are left to the community as a whole and to each individual who receives the nurture that both Christ and the community provide. Each and all must come to the realization that we are not self-made. Yes, we are individuals, but as Christians, the individualism so admired by the world must take a, a back seat to the reality that all that we are and have are as a result of the abiding grace of God. All are evidence of God's love and that love must be spread abroad, thereby bearing fruit. It is not about judgment, it's about growth. Because as the dead branches are removed, those that remain adhered to the vine become stronger and contribute to the health of the vine. That is a message that in this time carries much urgency for the contemporary church in all its divisions for the sake of the diversity that is the true body of Christ. The image of the sturdy vine that continues to thrive beyond all challenges that come against it can be a helpful one for the church. The branches, the people, individually, congregations, or even denominations cannot continue to grow and to thrive within the body of Christ unless they hold closely to the teachings of Christ. If that were the case, what the church would look like in its corporate life is a representation of all people with all their differences and a true image of diversity, the God of diversity. The guiding principle by which all would be transformed into the image of Christ is boundless, love of God and neighbor. In addition, because of that love, each person would seek to bring others into the beloved community to become fully a part of the body of Christ. She went on to talk about when she was a child, she would attend a lot of sort of revival services. And one of the hymns that was one that was familiar to her, one of her favorite hymns was, was called The Star in My Crown. And as a child, she, she imagined that what that meant was she had a star and a crown, and then every time she went out and, and you know, brought someone to, the, to, to worship to Christ, she would receive another star in her crown. Well, years have passed, and, and, and the song isn't heard anymore. Her faith has matured as well as, uh, as she herself has, and the star in her crown, I think, now is that she is a follower of Christ. But the idea that once we accept Christ, we then take our sustenance from Him, the vine. To bear fruit means to engage for ourselves and the church in activities that recognize and invest in the grace of God and spread that love and grace to our neighbors. As we continue to find our, our way through the turbulence of, of COVID and the changing, evolving societal norms that seem to lack the inclusion of, 
of the Christian faith, we still have a purpose. As branches of the vine, who is the core of life, who is the core of truth, we must cling tightly to the vine and bear the good fruit that bears his name, maybe more than ever. We know that the vine is, is the umbilical cord, the source of nourishment for life that gives us the understanding and the, the grounding and the identity that we desire and the purpose in our actions and endurance to make things happen. In thinking about that and just thinking about all the announcements we have this morning and the plans that are in place for the coming of the Christmas season, we want all of these experiences to be shared and experienced with all of you and with the people, our neighbors out there. Let us embrace these, these blessings of opportunity put before us to embrace what God has in store for us right now. God will lead us, and he's leading us to do these activities. Let's all be a part of it. Let's show the church to the people around us. Let us take God's church out into the community in the cookie tins, on the parade float, in the drive through nativity, and the smile that we offer to the stranger on the street when our masks are, are, are down. Let us be sure that the motivation behind our act, what the motivation is behind what we do, what our actions are, that we are there to hold up, to witness, and to share and show Christ, the true vine, the life-giving source of all that is good and worthy and hopeful and true, the true core of life. I want to conclude with the words of Carolyn Nostrum entitled Abiding in Christ, InterVarsity Press. Abide is an old English word for remain or stay or keep your position. What it means to abide in Christ, that is, always to be resting on him, anchored to him, fixed in him, drawing from him, continually connected and in touch with him, and a pervasive theme, is a pervasive theme in John chapters 14 through 17. There is no more precious lesson to learn, no more enriching link and bond to cherish, no more vital connection to keep snug and tight so that it never loosens the nest. Abiding in Christ brings peace, joy, and love, answers to prayer, and fruitfulness in service. The abiding life is the abundant life. The abundant life. May that be so as we abide in him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing this next hymn. May it be our prayer, asking God to nourish us, sustain us, replenish us. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew. 382 are on the screen.
God's goodness fills the world. If only we have eyes to see it. God's goodness fills the world. If only we have hearts to share what God has given us. Know that your gifts come from God's goodness and pass that goodness along to others. In Jesus' name. Our offering will now be received. take this time to to gather our thoughts and reflect on the situations of others let us pray God of our past and our future God of healing and hope we come before you with grateful hearts trusting that you walk with us through all the times of our lives the difficulty and the joyous and all in between we pray today for those who face danger and despair in these times. We pray for those living with hunger or struggling with the impacts of drought or storms and earthquakes. Those whom the pandemic just is unrelenting. We remember people caught up in unrest and violence. And those whose lives are directed by forces way beyond their control. We pray for all people working to relieve suffering in these lives and those who work to bring justice and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those facing fear or frustration, wrestling with sorrow or discouragement, mental illness. We pray for those whose lives are, in, whose lives are lived in pain and illness. We pray for those, those bearing chronic conditions or disability. We pray for those who know the grief and change of bereavement. We include the names at this time from our prayer list. We offer prayers for Burry and Norma, for Joy, Craig, Mitchell, Dale, Judy, and those we name in the silence of our hearts. So many times we, we can feel helpless or hopeless in circumstances. And we pray today for those who, who are feeling that way. We pray for those struggling to make ends meet or trying to find work, those caught up in the pain of misunderstanding or broken relationships, those working through situations of conflict at home or at work. We include today our prayers for those who, who work to offer guidance and support in the midst of such difficulties 
and for those who have skills in reconciliation or mediation to assist others. God of our past and our future, of healing and of hope, we ask your, your guidance and presence upon our congregation and our pastoral charge and churches everywhere as we continue to regroup after months of pandemic isolation, to engage each day with faithfulness and creativity and to just be, continue to be encouraged. Where we need correction, show us a new way. Where we need love and encouragement, we invite you to draw near to us. Whatever our challenge, may you be our source of sustenance and hope in, in all things. We as followers of Jesus pray in his name and for his sake. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn, 352, I danced in the morning. As we dance our way through life, let us dance the, the vine, our true source of, of life and hope. 352. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
bless you and keep you, abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.